This offseason, the New York Giants made it a priority to upgrade their offensive line. They selected three offensive linemen in the 2020 NFL Draft, and they also signed an offensive tackle, Cameron Fleming, in free agency. Two of the players that they drafted were offensive tackles. One was an offensive guard, and Cameron Fleming was also an offensive tackle. Now, of course, there is only two starting offensive tackle positions on a team, and the Giants have three acquired this offseason. Plus, they already have one left tackle on the roster, who is due to make $16 million this season. Nate Solder signed what was, at the time, the largest contract for any offensive tackle in the history of the NFL. Now he is sitting on this roster with potentially two replacements on there with him. So, what are the Giants going to do with Nate Solder in 2020? The Giants do have a few options as to what they can do with Nate Solder in 2020. First of all, they can just keep him at left tackle and let him start there. But, in my opinion, that would be a terrible idea. They drafted Andrew Thomas with the fourth overall pick in the 2020 NFL Draft, and I think that he should instantly start at left tackle. A lot of people also think that he should start at right tackle for the first season to get him acquainted to the NFL and then move him over to left tackle in the second season. Um, this would avoid moving Nate Solder across the line of scrimmage where he could potentially play even worse. But the way that I see it, Thomas was drafted to play left tackle, and if that's what they plan on playing him for the next 10 years or so, then they should just have him play there right away. Why potentially stunt his growth putting him on the right side of the line and then having him relearn a new position, which is left tackle in his second season. Just have him learn one position and get good at that position, and then remain at that position for the entirety of his career. We know that Andrew Thomas is a stud left tackle, and in fact, he played 1,075 pass blocking snaps in his collegiate career. On those snaps, Thomas allowed only 37 total pressures. He also has not allowed more than two pressures in a game since 2017 when he was a freshman playing right tackle. Now, of course, in the NFL, Andrew Thomas will be going up against much tougher competition than he did in college, but he did play in the SEC, and he did go up against some pretty solid competition. Um, most recently, I know he played up against Kayla Von Chasen of LSU, who was a first-round draft pick in this year's draft, and in my opinion, he definitely got the better of Kayla Von Chasen in that matchup. I'll roll some of the clips on the screen. I think that Andrew Thomas really handled this uh, pass rusher well, especially considering the insane speed that Chasen had off the edge. One of the criticisms that people had about Andrew Thomas coming into the draft was that he wasn't so great against speed rushers, but I think that when you watch him play against LSU, he really kind of disproves that criticism because Caleb Von Chasen is as speedy as it gets from an edge rusher position, and Andrew Thomas pretty much shut him down for the majority of the game. Uh, Chasen got the best of him on maybe three total plays uh, in terms of pass rushing snaps. So as I stated, Andrew Thomas played over a thousand snaps in pass block, and he only allowed 37 total pressures in all of those snaps. Now for Nate Solder this season in 2019, he allowed 56 pressures at the left tackle position. That was a league high. This was definitely the worst year of his career. Of course, he was with the New England Patriots before signing with the Giants uh, in 2018. But this was the worst graded season of his career, according to Pro Football Focus. He had an abysmal 64.8 overall grade, which ranked 70th out of 89 qualifying offensive tackles. And his run blocking grade was a 52.9, which is a putrid grade. And run blocking was always Nate Solder's strength in his NFL career. He did have a lot of flaws as a pass blocker, dating back to his time in New England. But he was always a solid run blocker. And to see both as aspects of his game really take a nosedive this season kind of does not bode well for his future. Um, it kind of looks like Nate Solder is clearly regressing and has he's past his prime is what I think. I think... This season, 2019 season, was the last season that Nate Solder will ever play at even a replacement level, um, but I don't think that he's even good enough to be a starter anymore. I, I think that Andrew Thomas is already the best left tackle on the roster without having played a down in the NFL. So if Nate Solder doesn't start at left tackle, could they trade him? Could they cut him? Well, maybe, but... Nate Solder has an enormous cap hit this season of $19.5 million. 
when he signed that four-year, $62 million contract in 2018, he was making on average $15.5 million per year. Now, at some point, the Giants did restructure his contract and backloaded it. So his cap hits in the early seasons were $10 million and then $12 million. And now for these last two seasons, it's $19.5 million and $20.5 million. But there is a way for the Giants to get out of Nate Solder's contract and not incur too much of a penalty uh, this season. So had they released him earlier on in the offseason, there would have been a $16 million dead cap hit. But post June, June 1st, uh, obviously we're well past June 1st at this point, the dead cap hit is only $9.5 million. So rather than only saving $3.5 million uh, if they cut him before June 1st, if they were to cut him after June 1st, they would save $10 million, which is a huge difference. And then next season, if they cut him, they'll save $14 million. So it's definitely possible for the Giants to get rid of Nate Solder's contract. They're going to incur a pretty huge penalty regardless. $9.5 million if they cut him or trade him at this point is still a lot of money to have on dead cap. But they're going to save $10 million, and they could definitely reinvest that somewhere else. Um, the DeAndre Baker situation is very sticky. It doesn't look like he's going to be on the team anymore. Um, I could be wrong. Uh, you got to let the legal situation play out, but it looks like he's not going to be on the team. And if that's the case, they might need to sign a cornerback, or they'll just save the money. I don't know what they'll do with it, but they could reinvest that $10 million elsewhere. If I had to pick, I would put it right in that cornerback two position. So if the Giants wanted to trade or cut Nate Solder... They could, but would they be able to get anything in exchange for a trade uh, from another team for Nate Solder? Honestly, it's not likely. If he if he's traded, that team is going to have to take on that nearly $20 million salary cap hit. And there's not a lot of teams that at this point in the offseason have any real money uh, to spend on a left tackle, especially when you consider how poorly Nate Solder played last season. Like I said, he allowed 56 pressures. He was easily one of the worst left tackles in the NFL. Um, he was actually named CBS Sports' most overpaid NFL player. Um, like this week, I believe he won that really terrible award. Um, so I can't see there being a market for him if they decide to trade him. Now, if the Giants do decide to move on from Nate Solder before the season, I don't think that's a decision that they'll make anytime soon. Uh, I, I think that that's something that they would consider doing after preseason. Um, going into the regular season, maybe they would want to trade or cut him then. But anything before the preseason, I, I wouldn't do it because I want to see at least if he plays better at right tackle. Now, the Giants could definitely let him position battle at right tackle during training camp. And then once preseason rolls around, I know it's only a two-week preseason, but... I think that he would have to start both of those two weeks just so we could see what we have in him at that position. See how he plays there. If he's just as bad on the right side as he was on the left side, I would probably consider cutting him just because of the depth that we do have at that position now. I know it's weird to say, but the Giants have offensive line depth now. They haven't had it in a long time. But after this draft, I think they really do. Um, so at right tackle, if Nate Solder were to play there, and if he played really poorly... Uh, behind him, you still have Cameron Fleming, who could start instead. Maybe he's playing better in the preseason. And then you also have Nick Gates, potentially, if he doesn't play at center. If Shane Lemieux or Spencer Poli gets that job, Nick Gates can be the, the uh, right tackle. And then, of course, Matt Parrott. Maybe he progresses even quicker than I expect him to, and he might be ready to go. So the Giants do have some depth there, and even if they decide that it's not enough depth... Cutting Nate Solder frees up $10 million in cap space, so maybe they could spend 3 to $4 million on a replacement starter-level caliber right tackle in free agency who sits around or who gets cut at the end of the preseason for another team. All in all, I think the Giants should give Nate Solder a chance to play right tackle, but regardless of what happens, whether he plays there and if he plays well or not, I think this should be his last season with the team. That contract just looks worse and worse every year. Uh, he really hasn't lived up to it, and I don't expect that to change anytime soon. Um, so since they can cut him next year and only have a dead cap hit of $4 million, I think that's the time to do it. Why prolong the inevitable? Why keep him around another year? I think next year you're going to have Andrew Thomas with a year of left tackle under his belt. He's going to have that position locked in. And then at right tackle, I think Matt Parrott might be ready to, ready to play there. Uh, if not, maybe they're in position to even draft someone even better to play there. Who knows, but Nate Solder isn't a long-term answer, so 
keeping him around longer than he needs to be is unnecessary, and that's why I think that after this season, they should cut him or trade him and, and just call it quits on the Nate Solder contract. So those are my opinions on Nate Solder heading into 2020. That's what I think they should do with him. I'd love to hear what you guys think they should do with him down below in the comments section or on Twitter. You can follow me there at Anthony underscore Rivardo. Link is in the description. Be sure to check out our articles over at EmpireSportsMedia.com. Please leave a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe for more great New York Giants content. And also hit the notification bell because, as I mentioned in our last video, some of our videos aren't popping up into sub feeds and in inboxes. So in order to combat that, uh, it would be really we'd really appreciate it if you guys just hit the bell so you get the notifications whenever we post. So I'll see you in the next one, guys. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.